Welcome back to Carolina this week. Joining me now is Jerry Fouts. He will be the last candidate we'll profile in the mayoral race in Myrtle Beach. Thanks for being with me this morning, Mr. Fouts. Well, I'm thankful for the invitation. First off, I ask this of just about every candidate. Who are you and why are you running for mayor of Myrtle Beach? Well, I'm Jerry Fouts. Uh, I've been in Myrtle Beach 25 or 30 years. I'm a U.S. Army veteran. And uh, I'm running for Myrtle Beach, for the mayor of Myrtle Beach, because I don't think the current uh, leadership has done anything for the local residents of Myrtle Beach. You know, the place hasn't improved since I came here. And I want to make, uh, the central thing I want to make is a central park south in the old eyesore that was the mall location. And we could have a beautiful park, just like in Central Park in New York, with tavern on the greens, indoor and outdoor, dining and dancing, and bring the community together. I went to, uh, at the library, they have the old timers growing up in Myrtle Beach, and I've been for the last two sessions. And the one thing they missed the most, there's no there, there, there's no here, here. They used to all go down to the pavilion, dance, and everybody knew each other, but now they don't know where to go. And with this park, you know, New York is more combined and unified than Myrtle Beach. And uh, everybody goes to Central Park, they relax, walk around, sit on the benches, read the paper. And our retirees here would have a place to go and we could have community events there. And uh, the Tavern on the Green was a great place. I used to live in New York and I went there all the time, dancing and so forth. But now, Nobody knows where to go. If you want to shag, you have to go to North Myrtle Beach. <laughs> <laughs> um, Myrtle Beach is a huge tourist destination with millions of visitors each year. One of the big pushes that the current council has made is for sports tourism. Is that something that you'd, you'd, you want to see continue? Well, I like sports. I'm a big fan. I work for an all-sports radio station here in Myrtle Beach, WMYB, a long time ago. And we broadcast the Myrtle Beach High School games. And I was a colored man, even though sometimes I didn't even go to the games. <laughs> <laughs> but we had a great announcer. He was a retired Philly announcer from Philadelphia. And he was really great. And I think if we can get uh, people to the Cal Ripken Park, and uh, any, anything like that will help. But I want to develop the local economy. You know, Conway does without tourists. They're mm -hmm. not hurting. I mean, you know, our focus is on tourism, mm -hmm. but we also want to look out for the citizens of Myrtle Beach. They're being ignored. What, what other things outside of the park, what, what are some other initiatives that you'd like to take on? Well, <coughs> I've been to 25 or 30 countries. Dancing's been good to me, performing. And I've been in a lot of beaches, and Myrtle Beach is the most primitive beach I've ever seen. There's not one restroom on the beach. And wherever you go, even in third world countries, they have a place you can get a snack, go to the restroom, go to the, you know, and we don't have anything like that. The beaches haven't been improved in 2,000 years. In fact, Tim, the locals don't even go to the beach now. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's not, you, they have 14 rules to sign. And you go out there, you have to take what you can take. You, if you've got to go to the restroom, there's the ocean or <laughs> nowhere else. You know, a big issue that uh, a lot of, that some candidates are bringing up and everybody talks about, it seems, in every election cycle is crime. You live in Myrtle Beach and you've been talking about the people who live in Myrtle Beach. Do you think crime is a problem in Myrtle Beach? Is there something that can be done about crime from the city's perspective? Yes. <clears throat> I was asked that recently and I'd like to tell you what I would do about it. Okay. Uh, sometimes, Tim, the experts don't have the answers, like the chief of police and people like that. They've been doing the same thing for 40 years, and they don't know anything else. But the first thing, <coughs> and I was shocked when I learned this, fugitives from other states, when they're stopped here and they're wanted for murder or whatever, they are not returned to the states. The chief said it was a budget problem, and they stopped the night before we had a candidates meeting. The night before, they had stopped five people that were fugitives from other states, and they didn't want them back. So they had to turn five criminals loose 
on our unsuspecting residents. So you say five times 30, that's over 100 criminals or potential criminals let loose on the population. So those people are not Sunday school teachers. They're going to commit more crime. So I'm, here's what else I would do. South Carolina leads the country in men murdering their partners. That was in the paper last week. I would do this <coughs> if a person called a domestic call. Mm -hmm. I would take the man in and be an automatic five-day jail sentence so he could cool off and calm down. You know, they paid fifty dollar bond, they go beat, beat up the girlfriend again or kill him, whatever. We've had that happen, I know, two times right here. So the five day cooling off period, the guy would, you know, give him some counseling and is it really worth it to kill your wife? <laughs> right. Uh, another thing, I would get the guns out of the hands of criminals. You know, I've been in the army. And guns, you get a gun, it makes you feel powerful. You can kill anybody you want to, even though you're maybe a weakling. So I would have a premium gun buyback, $200 or more for each pistol or handgun. And then there's a lot of people that would need 200 that would turn them in. And then after that, I'd make Myrtle Beach a gun-free zone and have it posted on the city limits. So anybody caught carrying a gun without a permit would be a long prison sentence. You've got to get these guns out of these uh, hands of criminals. Now, another thing I would do, if the police are shorthanded and they claim they're 19 officers short, why go and send these plainclothes officers posing as Johns to pick up prostitutes? They're going to let out on $50 a bond and they're going to be out there the next week. You're not going to stamp out the world's oldest profession. profession. And I had one more other thing. Uh, get the guns out of the hand of the criminals and the shorthanded policemen and so forth. So legal guns had to be locked in the trunk of the car. I think we can get the guns out of these hands of the criminals. Last question for you. Okay. Need a quick answer on it. Why should I vote for you? Well, I think the Myrtle Beach people, the local residents, they haven't had a thing for the last 30 or 40 years. The same group has been in. One family's been in for 40 years. They need to, I would work to get restrooms and cafes on the beach, shade trees and benches so you could sit down and read the paper and relax. And I also would work to get Central Park built on that old eyesore with tavern on the green, dancing and uh, dining and so forth. And I would, I've been warned not to say this, but <coughs> I was shocked when I read this article. This was sent out to everybody, it cost thousands of dollars, all the voters in Myrtle Beach. And they're recommending that you elect these people to mayor and these four people. Now, the Chamber of Commerce <coughs> is connected with that. And I was shocked when I read that each candidate, the last election last year, was paid uh, 60 or so thousand dollars. Well, if you're getting paid 60 thousand dollars, who are you working for? You're working for the person that's paying you 60 thousand dollars, not the person that's voting and the residents of Myrtle Beach. So I would suggest this. I don't think we'd have one more person visit Myrtle Beach if we did away with the Chamber of Commerce. It'd be the same amount of people. And I would go for the New York market. You know, they just had a fiasco where they paid a half a million dollars for Canadians. Canadians are notorious for not tipping and not spending money. <laughs> you asked any waitress in town. <laughs> but, uh, I would take the $20 million that they gave to the chamber, they give, it's a one cent sales tax, and uh, use it to build a park, to build the places on the beach, cafes and restrooms on the beach, and uh, benches and so forth, so we could relax and enjoy ourselves. Myrtle Bench is fragmented. You know, they have the Grand Dunes here, they have the uh, something else here, and so 
I would suggest anything. I would suggest that people read that article and they'll find out they've been taken for suckers. Here's the, you know what article I'm talking about? It's in the Sun News. David Wren's article in the Sun News. Uh, it's amazing that, uh, here it is. Here's another one of those uh, publications. They're spending thousands of dollars telling us how great they are. <laughs> I would suggest everybody read this article, published September the 4th, 2013. And it says, this is a warning for all anybody that wanted to run. You're not going to make it. Because they have spent $250,000 supporting the candidates. And that those candidates work for them, not for the city of Myrtle Beach, Ray. That's all I got to say. I know I was advised not to say anything about that, but it's just a fact. Jerry Fouts, thanks for being <laughs> with us. We could not fit the entire interview on air today, but you can go to your website, carolinalive.com, click on the mayoral link, and you'll find the, this entire interview. Thanks for being with me Both this morning. For me. <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be right back.